Hey guys, uh, so I come to you with a bit of a different video. I don't actually think that this um, picture shows it terribly well, but uh, my bedroom and actually my entire apartment is super messy at the moment. Um, and like probably somewhere between 70 and 90% of the reason that it is messy is because there are books lying around everywhere. And some of those books that are lying around are books that um, I've recently acquired that don't have a spot on these shelves yet. Um, and so basically it's just a, uh, messiness caused by lack of organization. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize these bookshelves to the extent that I can with the books that are lying around, which, um, some of which are newly acquired books, some of which are old books that I've just had lying around because I've been wanting to read them or thought I would read them and didn't end up reading them. And uh, thought I would just sort of give you a little time lapse of that because, you know, uh, we all like books as physical objects, I think, uh, and I thought that you you guys might enjoy it. Um, so you'll be seeing it in time lapse, so uh, I don't think it'll be a terribly long video because those time lapses always go kind of faster than we always expect, but I might stop um, at some point during the reorganization um, and show you some of the notable books that I've acquired uh, in recent in the recent months. Um, so anyway, without further ado, I will just turn on the time lapse and uh, get to work. So anyway. Hey guys, uh, so I hope uh, you got something enjoyable uh, b uh, out of that. Um, it was kind of short, um, as those time lapses tend to be. Um, but I uh, have some books that I have acquired recently that I thought I would just show you, because um, they're quite notable, uh, and I'm quite excited about them, um, both because of what they are and because of the additions. Many of you may remember the Goodwill that I mentioned the in my uh, wrap, September wrap-up. Um, the Goodwill that's like 10-15 minutes away from me um, is amazing. I cannot believe the turnover they have. Um, you know, I mean, there are, is still a lot of the sort of usual bookish, you know, uh, stock that you expect at a thrift store, like Janet Ivanovich and Stephen King and James Patterson and whatever. Um, but they also have, um, they have new books every week, uh, and, and every now and then they, almost every week I find at least one or two books that are, like, books that I would like to have and read. Um, but every now and then there's just gems come, uh, appear there. Um, like, um, the books are on the shelf now, but, um, I, a, a few weeks ago found, uh, Library of America editions of James Fenimore Cooper, of uh, some of his leather stocking tales and some of his um, sea tales, uh, sea novels, um, and they're there on the shelf, so I can't really show them to you. Uh, but like Library of America, you know, at a thrift store, that that's you know that's a, a two volumes that would usually be like eighty dollars if you were to buy them uh, at full price, um, which I got for like you know a dollar fifty each. Um, so it's just crazy, but I found some today and last week that I thought I would show you. And one of these books is not from the Goodwill. One of them is from the For Free shelf, shelf on the library. Um, so I guess I'll just start with that one. Um, so it's um, it's this. It's Patient H.M. Uh, memory, Madness, and Family Se Or a story of memory, madness, and family secrets. Um, this is by Luke Dietrich. And um, I grabbed this from the shelf because uh, I... As a psychology major, which I was in college, uh, you learn all about HM uh, because when you take cognitive psychology classes and neuroscience classes, um, so many of the seminal studies on memory were done on patient HM. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, he's this man who suffered from horrible a horrible case of epilepsy. And um, to cure his seizures, uh, a doctor 
uh, lesioned or or um, surgically removed his hippocampus, uh, which is a region of the brain very important for memory. Um, and so basically, uh, this guy, patient HM, who was referred to as HM to basically shield his privacy, I think his real name has been revealed, um, but, uh, basically he is one of the most important people in the history of psychology because, uh, the fact that he didn't have a hippo hippocampus made it him very crucial to studying memory, um, but also his own personal story is one of, you know, personal tragedy, I mean, because, you know, this man was left basically unable to form any new memories. Um, so he would wake up every morning and need to be reintroduced to his wife. Um, you know, the, re the the psychologist who came to do research, he would be reintroduced to them every time. Um, you know, every day was just a new world to him. Um, so it really is also a story of personal tragedy, and I think that this book tells that. Um, and also a little bit about the sort of research, seminal research that was done on him by psychologists. So, yeah, that, that's of obvious interest to me since I'm getting my psychology, uh, I mean my PhD in psychology. Um, so, yeah. All right, uh, on to the Goodwill books. Um, so, uh, one book that I found uh, at the tail end of ShakeTube, incidentally, was this. Um, this is Hamlet. Uh, this is the Kitteridge Shakespeare. This is edited and with notes by, uh, uh, Lyman Kitteridge. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but basically what I thought was interesting about this, um, unfortunately it's not in the best condition. It is a bit stiff and uh, bent out of shape, but more than half of this volume is just notes. Um, so I think this right here, that's all notes, and then that's the text of the play. Um, and Hamlet is a is a work of literature that I want to try to read every year. So an annotated edition like this seemed like a good thing to have. Um, but also, I'm j I just like Hamlet. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, next another book. So the these next books I'm going to talk about. The next several books are all books that I found just today when I was there, and I found a real treasure trove today. Um, and that started with this. Um, which is Flush by Virginia Woolf. And this is um, called, this is subtitle, this is, the official name of this is Flush, a biography. Um, however, it seems a bit fictionalized because it's like a, it's a, a biography of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the Victorian poet, who incidentally is someone whose work I'm trying to read at the moment from that anthology of Victorian literature that I hauled last week, which I also found at the Goodwill. Um, but it, it's it's supposed to be a biography, biography of her, but it's told from the perspective of her dog, uh, which I've always, I've heard of this book before, and I've always thought that it sounded like a really cool concept. Um, but I just hadn't gotten around to acquiring the book and reading it, so now that I have it, I will hopefully actually read it. And, um, you know, Mel over at Mel's Bookland Adventures is doing her, um, Gone with the Book readathon of books published between 1900 and 1950, and um, I had I had uh, put on my TBR for that readathon Three Guineas by Virginia Woolf, one of her nonfiction books, um, and uh, I'm thinking of replacing that with this uh, because I want to read more Virginia Woolf, but uh, I think I might be more interested in this than I am in Three Guineas. But anyway, so yeah, that's flush. Um, and then we come to the real find of the week, kind of the find of the year at this particular Goodwill. Um, so I, like, I don't know, someone must have dropped off a bunch of books from their library today because um, there were um, several uh, just leather, lovely leather-bound books. I think they're from sort of a series by a particular publishing house. Um, uh, so, um, hold on. So, yeah, the 100 Greatest Books Ever Written, Collector's Edition. These are from, um, Bound in Genuine Leather by the Easton Press, which is from Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, so anyway, these are all from the same press, all lovely, all beautiful. Um, and so, uh, we start off with a classic of all classics and one of my favorite books of all time. This is, uh, The Iliad. Uh, oh boy, you can't see that very well. Um... This is the Iliad, anyway, and the translation of the Iliad is by Alexander Pope. 
uh, which is a translation that uh, I have not read, uh, and which I've heard very good things about. I've heard it's beautiful, um, and it has illustrations all throughout as well. So, yeah, quite nice. Um, next, what do we have? Um, so this is two plays by Anton Chekhov. Um, the two plays are The Cherry Orchard and The Three Sisters. And Chekhov is a uh, writer I've wanted to read. Mostly his plays. I know he is also really well known for his short stories. I'm sure I'll uh, get to, get around to them. Uh, but I'm mostly interested in, it, in his plays for now. And this is a bind-up of two of them. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely lovely. I mean, it, yeah, I, I, I mean... This was just quite a quite a fine, and it has an introduction by John Gielgud, uh, which should be really interesting. I love John Gielgud, so anyway. Um, next is um, Aeschylus, the Oresteia. Uh, again, don't know if that's great lighting, um, but this is the Oresteia, his uh, Aeschylus, a Greek playwright, his trilogy uh, of plays. Sorry about the um, family of Agamemnon, um, and illustrated once again. Um, translation by E.D.A. Morsehead, um, with an introduction by Rex Warner, who I think also did an introduction of the Iliad at one point. Um, so anyway, yeah, great find. Um, I reread the, the Oresteia earlier this year, but I may have to reread it next year in the wake of this find. Um, alright, next, uh, Candida by Voltaire, um... Not the again, not the best lighting. Uh, this is probably also illustrated. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, so anyway, yeah, I don't know much about Candida, but I know that it's a huge classic. Um, another illustration, um, and I would like to read it. I would also like to read some of Voltaire's nonfiction, but uh, I would be happy to to begin with this. So yeah. Um, and next, this is a portrait of the artist as a young man, which, uh, since I mentioned, uh, Mel's Gone with the Book, ta uh, read -a -thong, this was one of the books that I put on my TBR for that, and so it was a very, uh, appropriate find. Um, yeah, a book I've wanted to read for quite some time, and, uh, once again, nicely illustrated. Um, and then finally we have Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott, um, which is a, a historical novel about uh, medieval England. Um, and I, I also don't m know much about it, but when I heard that it's about medieval England, I thought it sounded right up my alley. It's a historical novel. I think Walter Scott is known as sort of the father of historical fiction. Uh, so that'll be cool. Um, but basically, I just thought that I couldn't possibly pass up editions like this when they're at, you know, $1.50 each. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, so that's great. Um... And then I have a few books that I'm unhauling, um, getting rid of, uh, mostly because of books that I found recently. So, um, The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov in this crappy Dover Thrift edition. Obviously, I just found another edition of this, so I'll just read it from that, and this, yeah, this can go to the Goodwill. And then uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, which I also found a hardcover copy of today, but which I didn't feel the need to haul because it's just... It's a pretty plain copy, but anyway, this is again another crappy throw Dover Thrift edi edition, but I have a nice hardcover that will last much longer. Uh, and then the last book that I'm unhauling is, um, is this A Modern Guide to Symphonic Music by Alfred Frankenstein. Um, the main reason I'm unhauling this, it's, it's, so it's basically an encyclopedia of symphonic music. Um, you know, it has all the classics, Beethoven, um, Sch some Schoenberg, Bruckner, Brahms, um, Franz Joseph Haydn, uh, Prokofiev, Tchaikovsky, others, um, and it just discusses a lot of the major symphonic works by them, uh, and, but the, the reason I'm unhauling it is because it's so technical, um, you know, many of the entries are written like, um, are just written in such a technical manner with regards to how it talks about the music. And it's written in a way that I just can't quite understand because I, I don't have the knowledge of music to understand. You know, it'll it'll quote long passages from the sheet music. Um, and it'll say, okay, refer to this passage up here um, when I'm saying this. 
And, you know, I know the very rudiments of reading sheet music, basically, uh, and not much else. And when you only know rudiments, then the long passages don't do much for you. Um, or at least for me. So I, I want to find another good guide to classical music, um, but this one just isn't doing me much good. So I'll be donating it to the Goodwill. Um, anyway, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was interesting to you all. Um, if not the time lapse, then perhaps the haul was. Uh, but anyway, I will be coming to you for uh, at least one other video, I hope, this weekend. So anyway, I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.